On the Pasuk Zeyitnu, which the Torah says in reference to the Machtzis HaShekel, the Razal tell us, Rashi brings it in his Pirush Allah Torah, Amar Abmeir Abmeir said, that Kimin Matbeya Shel Eish, Hashem took out like a coin of fire from under his Kisei HaKavoid, shows it to Moshe Rabbeinu and says, Zeyitnu, this is what they should give, meaning something that looks like this, like this coin of fire. Similar to this, that Hashem, shows Moshe an example for something that he had commanded him, we find in regards to a number of inyanim. First of all, it says, Niskasha Moshe, Moshe Rabbein was having a difficulty with a Maisei, a menorah, how the menorah is made, until Hashem showed him a menorah of fire. A second thing, Moshe Rabbein was having difficulty with the moilad halavan, or what the moon looks like, at the stage when you need to sanctify the new moon, the new month, Moshe, Hashem shows him, points with his finger and says, Hashem points in the sky to the moon and says, when it looks like this. And number three, by the Isser of Shrotzim, the creepy, crawly things that the Torah tells us are Tomei, it says, again, Hashem is pointing it out, and other examples. The question that Rebbe has is, in regards to these other things, we can understand why Hashem needs to show it to him. Because clearly there are certain details and complicated, complicated aspects about them in their design or otherwise. For example, by the Menorah. The Menorah has the designs of the special Gevim, Kaftorim, Prochim, all the special designs that it had. It all has to be part of one piece of gold. It has to be in a specific part of the Menorah. It has to have a specific design and form. We understand it's difficult and complicated. Hashem shows Moshe Rabbeinu. When it comes to the Moila Dalavana, Again, Moshe Rabbeinu has to know at exactly which size, what the moon has to look like, so we should be able to sanctify it. We should also be able to be certain that it is the moon, and be able to describe where in the sky it was seen with all the details, as the Gemara says, what we used to question and ask the Eidus that would come to testify that they saw the moon. So too, when it comes to the Shratzim, not necessarily all of them were known exactly what they look like. So Hashem shows Moshe Rabbeinu. However, when it comes to the Machtzis HaShekel, the question becomes, it doesn't seem to be anything complicated and difficult, what a Machtzis HaShekel is. In fact, we even find Eliezer Eved Avram using the exact amount that was used now for the Machtzis HaShekel. So it would have been enough for Hashem to say to Moshe Rabbeinu that a Machtzis HaShekel should be given. Why is it that he has to show him a Matbeya coin of fire? So Toysvis and Menachus explains... Why the Gemara actually doesn't count Machzis HaShekel amongst the things that Moshe Rabbeinu had a difficulty with, as in the Menorah and the Kiddush HaChodesh and the Shratzim. So Toysvah says, you can't say Niskasha, Moshe Rabbeinu had a difficulty. Rather, Moshe Rabbeinu had no idea, Bechlal, if Hashem wouldn't have shown him. So the Rebbe asks, what does it mean Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have any idea of what a machzis shekel is, the amount of a machzis shekel? What's so difficult about that? And even if Moshe Rabbeinu does not know the exact size and measurement and weight and so on, Hashem could tell it to him how much it has to be, how big it has to be, how much it has to weigh and so on. Why does Hashem have to show it to him? He could just tell it to him. Furthermore, even if we should say that the only way of really understanding the machzis shekel is by showing something practical, why does it have to be a coin of fire? On the contrary, it would be more accurate to show what a machzis shekel of silver is, the one that's actually going to have to be given. Just like Hashem shows him the moon in the sky, just like Hashem shows him the shrotzen. Now, the fact by that by the menorah, he showed a menorah of fire, that's understood. Because a golden menorah actually didn't exist yet at the time. And in the footnotes over here, the Rebbe also discusses why Hashem couldn't make a special golden menorah, etc. But in the Sikha itself, the Rebbe says the golden menorah didn't actually exist yet. Whereas the machzis shekel, which is a physical coin, a physical size, a physical weight, why doesn't Hashem just show him an actual machzis shekel instead of pulling one out of fire from under the Kiseyak of it? The Rebbe asks another question. We have another Toysvus in Chulin. Previous one was in Menachos, this one was in Chulin. And Toysvis answers the question of why it is that the Machzis HaShekel isn't counted amongst the other things that Moshe Rabbeinu has a difficulty with. And Toysvis says like this, that in this case, Hashem shows it to him, even though Moshe Rabbeinu did not have any difficulty with it. 
But Moshe Rabbeinu was wondering about what could possibly be an atonement, koifer nafshe, to give something as an atonement for your soul, so Hashem pulls out a coin of fire. So the Rebbe asks, these two toysvahs seem to be, their logic seems to be exactly opposite from each other. The first toysvah that we quoted from Menachos, what did toysvah say? Not only that Moshe Rabbeinu had a difficulty with it, much more than that, he b'chalal didn't have any idea what this machzis hashekel is. Whereas the toysvahs and chulim, the second toysvahs that we just quoted, toysvahs says Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have a difficulty at all. He would have known exactly what the machzis hashekel is, even without Hashem showing it to him. Hashem is showing it to him because of a totally different reason, because Moshe Rabbeinu was questioning how it could be a kapora and so on. How do we understand these two toysvahs? In order to understand all of this, says the Rebbe, we're first going to explain something that the Rambam says in regards to the mitzvah of Machzah Sashekel. So the Rambam says, Hatzivui, the command that we were commanded for the Machzah Sashekel every single year. Hashem tells us, the Pasach is, Venosnu ish koifer nafshoi. That's one Pasach the Rambam brings, that each man should give the atonement for his soul. The Rambam then says, V'omer, and another Pasuk, the Hashem tells us, Ze Yitnu, this is what they should give. The question is, why does the Rambam need these two Psukim? Why is Ze Yitnu not enough? The Pasuk says clear, this is what they should give, the Machzis HaShekel. Especially that the command for the Machzis HaShekel is specifically in this Pasuk. It says, Ze Yitnu, Kolo Oiver al Machzis HaShekel. Here is where you have clearly the idea of Machzis HaShekel. Whereas in the first passage that the Rambam brings, Venosnu ish for nafshi, each person should give the atonement for a soul, doesn't actually even mention the actual mitzvah of giving the machzah shekel as a mitzvah for itself. The way it says it over there is that if you want to count the B'nai Yisroel, then each one should give a kapara for his nefesh and atonement for his soul, so that there shouldn't be any plague, any epidemic, when they're being counted, etc. But it's not being said directly as a mitzvah of a machzis ha-shekel. So why does the Rambam even need that pasuk? So to explain this, the Rebbe says that really, in the mitzvah of giving the machzis ha-shekel, we find two dinim. Two, two dinim, which the Rebbe is going to explain that each one is related to one of these psukim. The first one is that when you give the machzis ha-shekel, it all has to be given together. That means, as the Rambam Paskins, you can't give a little bit of it today, a little bit of it tomorrow. You have to give it all together. So that's din number one. The second one is that what you have to give is an actual coin of a machzus shekel, a silver half shekel. So you can't, for example, give made up from a few smaller coins. You can't give the value of the silver in the, that uh, uh, amounts to the machzis shekel, there has to be one single coin of a machzis shekel. So again, it's two separate halachas. First of all, that has to be all given at the same time, but in addition to this, it also has to be given as one coin. In regards to this idea that the Rambam says that it all has to be given at the same time, the Ragat Shavar explains the reason for this, is that the giving of the machzis shekel has a din of a carbon, because it's a kapara, it has the din of kapara, of atonement. And when it comes to kapara, you can never do things halfway. As the Gemara says, when one has to do tshuva and return that which was stolen from a geir, and eventually has to be given to the koyen, etc., carbon oshom, and so on and so forth. So it says, you have to give it to the koyen, the Gemara says, and if you gave it half at a time, you're not yoitza. Why? Because the Torah refers to it as an oshom, comparing it to a carbon oshom, and when it comes to a carbon, a asham, a kapara, it can never be done halfway at a time. Now, in regards to this idea that the machtes shekel is a carbon or is a kapara, this itself could be understood in two ways. Number one, the machtes shekel is a kapara. Why? Because with a machtes shekel, we're going to be buying the carbonis, carbonis tzibur that are going to be used throughout the year which are for the sake of kapara. That's one way of understanding why we associate the machzis shekel with kapara. A second way of understanding it is that the actual giving of the machzis shekel, right now, the actual machzis shekel, that itself is a kapara. That itself is like you giving a carbon right now, like a personal carbon. 
The Rebbe says these two ways of looking at it, you could, we could actually say this is a machloikas between Rashi and the Rambam. That is, that Rashi, the Rebbe is going to learn, is more that it's about the carbonis that are going to be brought with it, as opposed to the Rambam, who was the one that we're trying to explain earlier, the two different dinim that the Rambam brought, as we'll soon see. So Rashi explains on the, and says as follows, regarding the truma of the machtis shekel that is, the Pasuk says, l'chaper al nafshei seichem, meaning to say, because the carbonois that are going to be bought with it are for kaporo. In other words, when it says l'chaper al nafshei seichem, in plural, on your souls, because it's a kaporo for all of Klal Yisrael, because this is going to be used for the carbonois tzibur, meaning this is a kapara for all the Yidden together with the carbonois that are brought. However, the Rambam is learning it from the Pasuk that we said before, the Nosnu Ish Koifer Nafshoi, the Pasuk that speaks about in singular. And therefore, according to the Rambam, it's not referring to the kapara of the carbonois tzibur that will be brought with the machtes ha-shekel, but rather the machtes ha-shekel itself is like a carbon. The actual giving of the machtes ha-shekel, that's already kapara, not only what's going to happen later with the money. Says the Rebbe, based on this, we'll now see another difference between Rashi and the Rambam. According to Rashi, when a person is giving machtes ha-shekel, he actually has to have in mind that it's for the karbone tzibur. However, when we look at the Rambam, it seems to me that this is a totally separate idea that we're going to bring the karbone tzibur from it. As is evident from the fact that in the first Perik in Hilcha Shkolim, the Rambam only discusses the mitzvah itself of how the machzis ha-shekel is given. He doesn't mention at all the idea that since the karbonois tzibur are going to be brought from the new machzis ha-shekel coming in, therefore there's a mitzvah, minatoide, that a person should give the machzis ha-shekel every single year. That's not what the Rambam says. Furthermore, he doesn't even mention the idea that Karboni Sibur are going to be bought from it. Furthermore, the Rebbe says, in Perig Dalad, the Rambam, when he starts discussing the Karboni Sibur, he's starting off as if he's starting a whole new idea. He starts off saying, the Truma Salishka, this money that's taken for the Machtas shekel, what's going to be done with it? We're going to buy with it the Karboni Timidin of every single day, the carbon musaf, other carbon sibur, etc. In other words, when the Yid actually gave the machzas ha-shekel, which is what the Rambam is discussing in Perik Aleph, it's not so relevant whether it's for carbon sibur. Rather, as we said, this itself is already like a kapar, it's a carbon for itself. The fact that carbon will be brought with it later from the machzas ha-shekel, that's another idea, but it's not in the essence of machzas ha-shekel itself. So now, let's just summarize the main point so far that we're up to, is that according to the Rambam, giving the machzis ha-shekel itself is like giving a, bringing a carbon, or is a form of kapara. Again, as opposed to Rashi, but what's relevant now is the shita of the Rambam. It says the Rebbe, now we can understand why the Rambam, in his Sefer HaMitzvahs, is quoting the two psukim that we said before. Because from each one of these psukim, we're learning something else about the geder, about the definition of what giving machzis ha-shekel is all about. That is, from the words v'nosnu ishkoi for nafshoi, we learn that machzis ha-shekel is a kapara. It's like a carbon. And therefore, therefore what's going to come out from this is, as we said before from the Ragat Shavad, you're going to have to give it all together. Because it's a kapara. You can't do half today, half tomorrow. From the word ze yitnu, ze indicates something that you're giving one thing. Ze, it's this. Here we're learning another idea that you can't even give 10 individual gator, for example, a sum of 10 to equal the machzas ha-shekel, which then you may have thought, in other words, you could, and therefore, maybe if you're giving separate things, you could also give it in separate times and so on. But here we're learning something new now. You actually have to give one coin. One machzis ha-shekel. As the Ragged Shover puts it, it's called a sheer atzmi, not a sheer amitztarev. It's not something made up of a bunch of things together that makes up the sheer, the amount. It's in essence one thing, this machzis ha-shekel. And therefore, now that Rebbe concludes what we just said, we now have two dinim. There's one din as far as the person is concerned. There's another din in the object that has to be given, in the machzis ha-shekel. That is... 
The nos nuish kai for nafshi is about the person. He has to give a kapara. This is the halacha of the person. Since he is bringing a kapara, therefore he has to give it all at one time. It can be half today, half tomorrow. There is another halacha, the object that has to be given. That's the zayitnu. Here we're learning something regarding the object of the mitzvah, the cheftzah, that the chiyuv is zayitnu. We have to have a concept called a machatzis hashekel, a coin of a machatzis hashekel, not just money or silver that's going to add up to the amount, to the value, or to the weight of the machatzis hashekel. Says the Rebbe, now we'll also understand in the wording of the Rambam, the Rambam uses a double expression. He uses two expressions. He says that when you give the machzis hashekel, he says, kuloi ka'achas and bepa machas. Obviously, because there's two points over here. There's two ideas over here that you're giving a coin and you're also giving it all at the same time. Says the Rebbe and see if, hey, now we can understand what it means though it says Zayitnu, that Hashem takes out a coin of fire from under his Kisei covered and he shows it to Moshe Rabbeinu and he says, it's something like this that you have to give. And we're going to also understand now why it has to be specifically a fire. So the Rebbe now goes ahead to describe what fire is all about. The Rebbe says there's a very big difference between fire and the other elements from which Hashem makes everything in creation. So we know that there's four elements. There's the wind, water, dust, and fire. The other three are always measured in some way based on their quantity. How much space they take up. Or how much they measure. How much they're worth. And so on and so forth. There's always something to measure and to weigh. And however, when it comes to fire, it's not measured about how much space it's taking, taking up. It's not limited in a particular place, a, sp- a space. Because the whole idea of age, of fire, is more about a quality thing. Even a tiny drop of fire could just spread and spread and spread. And this is why when Hashem wants to show Moshe Rabbeinu, the machzis hashekel, if he would have just showed him a silver machzis hashekel, it still wouldn't have been clear what the gather of the mitzvah is. What is the real essence of here? What you didn't have to be doing? In other words, is he just being told you have to give the worth of this piece of silver, of a machzis shekel, or otherwise, and therefore maybe you could give it however you want, as long as eventually it's worth a half a shekel. Or does it have to be the amount of silver, the weight of a half a shekel? Does it have to be specifically a coin that, that its weight is a half a shekel of kesef, of silver? Therefore, Hashem shows him a coin of fire, which its weight was a machzis hashekel, but a coin of fire. What's Hashem trying to say to him? That no, it's not about the quantity. It's not about the worth, the value, or even the weight of the machzis hashekel. It's the essence, as we said before, there is this one nekuda that there has to be. It has to be the metzius of a machzis hashekel. It has to specifically be a coin of a half a shekel. We're not dealing over here with only something that could weigh and take up as much space and value of the half a shekel. In other words, the gather of the mitzvah itself is to give something, not, sorry, the gather is not to give something that has the value of a half a shekel or even to say that that's a condition that the silver has to be as a, in the shape of a coin or something like that. But rather, the point that Abishter is trying to make is that that is the very essence, the gather, the definition of the mitzvah is, that it has to be a coin like this. A coin that's a half a shekel. It says, the Rebbe, this is expressed, dafke in the coin of fire, because I said before, fire is not the thing that's measured based on a certain value or a certain worth, or a certain weight and so on. Rather, it's the actual etza mitzvah of what it is. It's fire. It says, the Rebbe, and obviously, since clearly we're not going to be giving a coin of fire. So when he says Zayitnu, it doesn't mean this a coin of fire. It means what's unique about fire. In other words, the idea of fire as it's expressed in a coin of silver. But what would it mean is that you have to dafke give something that's this coin. Exactly like this. And not just again the worth of it, the value, the weight and so on and so forth. Says the Rebbe, now let's have a look at the two explanation, explanations of Toysavus and how they're not a contradiction between each other. In fact, each one is giving us and telling us one of the ideas that we said about the Machzus HaShekel. And that is like this. 
In Mesech the Menachus, when Toysva says, Moshe Rabbeinu had no idea at all what kind of coin this is going to be. He wouldn't have known at all what it's all about if Hashem doesn't show him. Means that if Hashem wouldn't show him the coin of fire, Moshe Rabbeinu not only would have had a difficulty, he wouldn't have known at all this halacha that Zayitnu, that it's a chefza, it has to be dafka, coin of a half a shekel. He may have thought, yes, it could be the worth of a half a shekel, the weight of a half a shekel, and so on. When it comes to Mesech Tachulin, there Taisus is saying something else. Moshe Rabbeinu's wonder over here was not anymore about the physical idea of what needs to be given. Here Moshe Rabbeinu was questioning something else. It was more about the person. What could a person give that will be a kapara for himself? In other words, seemingly, we said before, it's a kapara. How is that? How is it suddenly a kapara? It's not a carbon. How does the machtis shekel work as far as atoning for the person? So here it's a different question. Says the Rebbe, based on this, that the question over here of Moshe is not that he doesn't know what a machtis shekel is, but rather he's trying to understand the carbon aspect of it. So when Hashem shows him a coin of fire, what's Hashem telling him? Here it's not telling him anymore like in the other Toysvahs that it has to be a matbeya, as we explained before, the machzis shekel. Here what's coming to be explained more is the concept of how the person could give the machzis shekel as a carbon, as a kapara. How do we understand this? So the Rebbe says that in kapara generally there's two kinds of kapara. There's two ideas in kapara. We find kapara through karbonois, lechapra al nafshei seichem, which is a kapara for your soul. And then there is, as we say over here, by the machzis ha-shekel, koifer nafshei. What's the difference? Kapara through karbonois means, as the translation of kapara usually is, an atonement to forgive for something, means that it's being removed, the impact, the tumor of the sin that was committed. When it comes to koifer nafshei, we're not speaking over here about taking off the sin. Koifer over here is from the word of redeeming the soul. That means that this nefesh is sort of being exchanged, redeemed, becoming like a new existence, a new mitzvah. These two ideas of kapara are generally also two ideas that we find by the concept of becoming pure from tumor, even in the simple sense. We have one idea when a person goes to the mikveh, he toivels in water, and that removes the tumor. Then there is what the Gemara speaks about, toiveling in fire. The Gemara says that the ideal tevila, the ideal toiveling, would actually be in fire. What's the idea of fire? It's not about removing the tumor. It's like fire in the literal sense, which is when you put a keli, when you put a vessel through the furnace, through the kiln, it becomes like a new keli, a new mitzis. The fire is recreating or making something new out of what was put in the fire. Says the Rebbe, this is the difference between the kapara of karbonois and the koifer nafshei that happens by machzis shekel. By the karbonois, generally, karbonois come for an aveda that someone did b'shoigeg. He did it by mistake, or at least not on things that are kores, Mrs. Bezdin, and so on. But what about the machzis shekel? It's coming, as it was for the first time, it's coming for the cheito ego. It's something that touched the very essence of the yid. It's definitely a chi of misa. And therefore, what's needed is something much deeper. Koifer nafshe, it's not only about a removal of a certain stain or sin and so on, it's redeeming, it's replacing, it's making a whole new metzius that the person should become. Says the Rebbe, this is what Hashem is revealing through showing him a coin of fire. That the machzis ha-shekel works similar to toiveling, to immersing in fire. In other words, like becoming a new metzius. Says the Rebbe, even though that Hashem showed the Madbeya Shalesh to show as the, that the giving of the Machtas HaShekel, as we said before, is not about the worth and the value, but you have to dafke, give this coin exactly. What does Rashi say, however, that this Madbeya Shalesh, he showed him Madbeya Shalesh, that was the weight of a Machtas HaShekel. Rashi says, in Madbeya Shalesh, Hashem showed him a coin of fire, um mishkolo, with the weight of a machzis shekel. So before we said it's not so much about the weight, it's just this coin, but Rashi says, and it weighed a half a shekel. 
Says the Rebbe, from the fact that Hashem made a miracle within a miracle, not only showing him a coin of fire, but also that this coin of fire has a weight, this proves that even this detail of the weight, Hashem is coming to teach Moshe Rabbeinu something over here, that if not for that, showing him the coin of fire and its weight, Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have known it on his own. In other words, when a, the Machtis HaShekel is being given, what's relevant over here is not only that it's a Matbeya Shaleish, but also that it has to be similar to Matbeya Shaleish that has what? A weight. What does this mean? So as the Rebbe in Siftes, we're going to understand it by first having a look again at what Moshe Rabbeinu was wondering about. Moshe Rabbeinu said, What could a person give as an atonement for his soul? As quoted earlier from the Toysavus. And this is why Hashem shows Moshe Rabbeinu a coin of fire. This idea is, originates in the Medrash. And there it says that when it says, ish nafshe, etc., this is one of the things, one of three things, that Moshe Rabbeinu heard from Hashem, and the message says, V'nivau, v'nirtala choyrev. He was shocked. He was shaken up. He sort of jumped backwards. The Medrash says, When Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Tzavez b'nei Yisrael, as korban ilach milishai, tell the b'nei Yisrael to bring this korban. And this will be my bread, my fire, and so on. Moshe Rabbeinu said, who could actually manage to bring enough carbonis to Hashem? If we even bring all the animals of the fields, it would never be enough for Hashem. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, I don't ask according to my abilities. I ask according to the Yidden's ability. When Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Who could make a Migdash that Hashem is going to dwell in it? Even the greatest heavens cannot contain Hashem. Hashem again says, so the question that Rebbe asks is, since Moshe Rabbeinu heard already regarding the Mishkan, that I'm not asking according to my ability, but according to the Yidin's ability, what is so shocking that Moshe Rabbeinu is so surprised when he hears the words, V'nosnu ish nafshoi, regarding the Machzis HaShekel. Now seemingly, you cannot say, that what Moshe Rabbeinu was bothered by, because this is a kapara for the chet or egel, which is, as we said before, touches the very, very essence of the Yid. Because, even for this we find already, that Hashem said to bring a bull during the day of the Miluim, the preparation for the Mishkan, lechaper al maise or egel, to atone for the maise or egel, which was a par, a calf, a bull, and so on. So what's bothering Moshe Rabbeinu so much over here? So the Rebbe says, by the Mishkan, it's understood that what Yidin are doing is Lefikoichan according to their ability. Why is that? Because the whole participation was the generosity of their hearts. As the Pasuk says, Kol Isha Sheyidvenu Liboy, everything that you feel like giving. Kol Nediv Liboy Yeviyeho, anyone who has a generous heart and wants to donate could bring it. So it's all about really the feelings and the ability of the person. By bringing that bull that we quoted before is a carbon. By carbon, we have the idea that when a person brings a carbon, it has to be lertzoyne, it has to be willingly. And it has to be the desire of the person donating it, the person whose carbon it is, and so on. Which all emphasizes the idea that Hashem says, I'm asking according to their ability, not according to my ability, according to what the Yid is able to, what he wants to, what he's capable of, etc. However, when it comes to the machtes shekel, we have a different halacha. Every single Yid has to give the Machzus HaShekel, whether he wants to or not. Furthermore, we know that in certain things we say that we say over here that a person would even be forced to give the Machzus HaShekel, and if someone doesn't give it, will take away a security, a mashkin from him, against his will, will even take his garments off him, just to get the Machzus HaShekel. So here is already a very, very different sort of situation. We're even taking it against his will. Says the Rebbe, even though you could say by Karbonus, there's also a concept of koif and oisai, that we force a person. But at least there, we're forcing the person until he will say roitzani, until finally, eventually, he agrees and he does give it mirtzoinai, by his own will. In other words, the person clearly has to say, I want. And even though it's, he's being forced to it, but nevertheless, when he verbalizes it, it really 
does express what he wants deep down inside, because as we know the famous Rambam that says that every year deep down inside wants to do what Hashem wants, and now he's also expressing it and saying Roitzani. But by Machatz is Hashekel, we don't even find that the Yid has to say Roitzani that I want to do it. That means it's completely doing it without his desire. So says the Rebbe, now is the question, since the giving itself is completely a chitzoini, is the idea, he's just giving it with his hand, and it's completely not, with his nefesh, with his desire, and so on, this is what Moshe Rabbeinu is saying. How could this type of giving be a koifer, nafshi, an atonement for a soul, when seemingly here, it's just Hashem commanded him to give, he's giving, but you can't say this is his koyach, his ability, his interest, he's putting in his bit, it's almost like he's not even involved in it. So this is what Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem shows him a coin of fire with the weight of the machtes shekel, which comes from under the kisei akavoid, and as we'll see in a moment how this will clarify and explain what Moshe Rabbeinu is bothered by. And the Rebbe explains in the following way. He says, the Rebbe, the inner reason for this is why by machtes shekel, in fact, we don't force the person that he should say roitzani, Especially, as we said before, it's similar to a carbon. So why don't we treat it like a carbon in that sense? Says the Rebbe, it's actually because of this idea itself that Machtis HaShekel comes to atone for the Cheto Egel, which, as we said before, reaches the deepest part of the Yid. They had completely disattached themselves on the deepest level of their nefesh and their Pnimius Rachman al Therefore, says the Rebbe, it wouldn't even help of your Koifen Oisei Yoima Roitzani, to say that the inner desire is coming out because seemingly even that part was already cut off. He completely disattached himself, even on that level. This is why Hashem takes out now a coin of fire from under his Kisya Kovid. On the deepest, deepest level of the Neshama. In other words, the way it's even higher than having a connection to the Guf, as far as the Neshama is connected to the Guf, we said it seems to be not even the Koyach of the Yid anymore over here. He's totally not even interested. But if we go to the essence of the neshama, which is completely higher than giluyim, than any expressions of the neshama, the essence of the neshama is completely higher than any koiches, even that also from his external actions and so on and so forth. This is what Hashem is showing Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem is revealing in a way, in other words, it's coming from above. That's how the Eibish does koyach. There's the matbeya shalesh, the fire that's coming from Hashem's kisi akovoid. There's the fire of the neshama, the essence of the neshama, how it's rooted in the highest place under Hashem's kisei HaKovid, as the Chazal tells us that the neshama is carved out from under the kisei HaKovid. And this, Hashem is revealing and drawing down, even down here to earth. That's, what it represents the, that's what's represented in the idea that it weighs a half a shekel, meaning even as the neshama is coming down with all of its faculties, down here into a world, even with its physical weight and so on, so to speak. In other words, we have a Matbeya Shalesh representing the Etzim of the Neshama. But how is it going to be expressed? It's not through something else of the Koichois, which in them you could say there's the Gashmi, is the giving and so on. But we, it keeps, it stays, it remains a Matbeya Shalesh that it weighs a half a shekel. In other words, that the Etzim and Neshama itself becomes and is revealed as the essence of all of the Koichois, even of the Gashmi, is the things down here in our body. And therefore, even when the giving of the Yid is in a way that he's not even saying, Roitzani, I'm interested in doing this, it's in a way of Mishkal. It almost seems like a weight upon him. He's just giving a physical, materialistic thing without a desire, without a chayas. It's like a weight that's schlepping him down, that's pulling him down, dragging him down. He has to be bothered. It's a bother for him. He has to be forced for it. We say, you know what? Even in that weight, and that's the whole point of Machzis HaShakel. Even by this Yid, even his giving is really connected to the deepest, deepest part of the Etzim HaNashama, the fire in his Neshama, meaning to say that the real Pnimius of that action is really an expression and a revelation of the Neshama, the way it's Tachas Kisei HaKovoid, the Matbeya of fire, which is the very essence of his Neshama. Says the Rebbe in Sifid based on all of this, we can now understand the two ideas, the connection between the two ideas and the machtes shekel. 
One idea that we spoke about was Venosnu ish for nafsha. In other words, it's something about what the yid has to give as a kapara for himself. We said that's more like a carbon. We also spoke about the idea zayitnu that this is a din in the object that has to be given in the chefza in the coin that has to be given, which is not about a weight and a value and so on. But there's a metzius over here, a concept of a machzis a shekel of silver. It says that Rebbe, the connection between these two things is both of them really express the same idea that the giving of the machzis a shekel. Both of them express this idea that it's a fiery machzas shekel. It's an expression coming from under the kisei akavoid, from the essence of the neshama. As the Rebbe explains, since the essence of the neshama is higher than all sorts of revelations and divisions and so on, it's understood that the nesina, the way the etzem and neshama is giving the machzas shekel, is similar to that. Number one, that it's given all at once, which means without division. And that the shear of the matbeah is not about the quantity, as we said before, that you're measuring it or weighing it, but rather it's, it's about the quality. It's the very essence of what it's all about. It says the Rebbe, for the same reason, the kapara of the machzis shekel is in a way of fire. What did we say before of fire? About fire, it's even higher than the kapara of karbonos. We said before it transforms the person. It makes the person to a new person. Because as a result of the Izgalas, the revelation of the Etzim and Hashama, all of his koiches are transformed, that the person becomes like a new person. Says the Rebbe in Sefiud Beis, this idea that Moshe, Hashem takes out the coin of fire, shows it to Moshe Rabbeinu. But when did that happen? After Moshe Rabbeinu was first shaken up and shocked. Says the Rebbe, the Rebbe explains it as follows. It's specifically when Moshe, who represents the level of Chochmah of Kedusha, is completely taken aback, completely shocked. In other words, he cannot absorb this idea how a physical action can bring to a kapara. That itself brought about that Hashem should show, should draw down from above to below this darga of the ash of the neshama all the way down to the weight, as we said before, meaning as the etzim and neshama expresses itself in a revealed way in the faculties of the neshama all the way down to the ma'isa mitzvahs. What does this teach us? That it came specifically after Moshe Rabbeinu's shock, so to speak. This teaches us a hayra in every yid's avoidah. Says the Rebbe, it happens sometimes that a yid doesn't feel a geshmak. He doesn't feel a chayas in his learning toyin, in his fulfilling of mitzvahs. It's mitzvahs anashem ulumadeh, he's doing it by rote. He's doing it like a body without a neshama. Furthermore, it seems to be a bother, it seems to be a yoke. He has to force himself to do what the Ebishter wants. And even when he's forcing himself, it's not like a servant just doing what he's supposed to. It's like he has no choice. What else should he do? So a yid has to know that when he would think about this itself with a proper esboinimus and the moishe inside of him, the chachma shebenefesh inside of him, inside of himself, is shaken up from the fact that he has no chayis, that he has no feeling in his avodas Hashem. And in fulfilling what Hashem wants, that itself, that shake-up itself will arouse the Indian of Hashem showing him a coin of fire. Meaning that Hashem will come along and assist this person. That Hashem will be mamshech and show the Moshe inside of him, the fire inside of him. The Etzim and Hashem. And that it even comes down into the level of Mishkola, into the weight, into the Gashmi's, the actions and faculties of the Nefesh and all in a revealed way. Says the Rebbe, there is also a Hira on the other hand. And that is, when a Yid, that in the meantime is not acting 100% the way a Yid, a Ben Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov should be acting. There is an obligation for every single Yid to be Makarev and bring him close to Torah and Mitzvahs. But there, is those that, there are those that argue. He says, what's the point, say some people, of going to tell this Yid that he should go put on Tefillah now. Or say Kriya Shema and other things like that. When he's not even up to that level yet. He doesn't even understand and he has no desire to do these things. What's the benefit of forcing him to do these things, to put on tefillin, when he's only doing it because he's an idle person, he's a, you know, a refined person, he can't refuse, but the mitzvah itself doesn't mean anything to him at all. These people argue and say that the order should be that the first thing is we have to go step by step, 
one day at a time, explain to the person, al pi seichel, why it's important to be doing mitzvahs. And only then he will start doing mitzvahs, he'll start having a desire, he'll start having a geshmak, and so on. Says the Rebbe, we have the Hira from the idea of machzus hashekel. That when a yid is fulfilling a mitzvah, even if, even if it's in a way of mishkol, it seems to be a weight. He doesn't have any pleasure, no desire, and even being forced. Hashem comes along and shows that really deep down inside, it's a madbeya shalesh, it's a coin of fire. It's really coming from the fire of the essence of his neshama. And therefore, of course, it deep down inside is his true desire and true delight. Says the Rebbe Adraba on the contrary. Through bringing about that the other person should do the mitzvah, even if right now he's being forced. Since in reality it's connected to the ish of the neshama, this will achieve that sof kol sof eventually, this madbeya shalesh, this coin of fire, will come out in a revealed way, even into mishkala, meaning even into, into practice, so that this will eventually become his rotsoin and tainig, his desire and delight, also in a revealed way, fulfilling the mitzvah eventually with the whole fire and passion of the neshama. And of course, this will hasten the bringing of the carbonates which were brought as we said before, from the Machzis HaShekel, in the base of Migdash HaShlishi in Yerushalayim Ir HaKodesh, as it says, Ba'eshat HaOsid Levnoisi, you will be building it with fire. HaShem says, I will be a wall of fire around, around, around you. Hey, Rav Yameinu Mamash.